Hey guys, welcome to our Fallout TV series review. As you can see, I'm wearing... Yeah. That's not going to work. Nope. Now I'm going to die from mold exposure. Joe, you remember these <laughs> elements had mold in them? I don't know. Oh my God, this thing is huge. Just as kind of goofy and unwieldy as we saw it on screen. But hey guys, so we just got done watching... The first four episodes, because all these things came out early, all eight episodes. Let's break it up into two parts for you so we can go into detail on each part. And let me start by saying, hey, I got, I finally got some more use out of this. We did it for one review. And it came out, and then I said, fuck this shit, and then I went back in for Fallout 4. But for Fallout the TV series, I will say, holy shit. Nikes. Uh, so we passed the eight seconds, ten seconds. Yeah, Hopefully. we had. Holy shit! I did not expect so much violence. Excellent. The gore and violence are really good in this, guys. Fallout TV. Considering how much uh, Amazon has fucked up, at least with other properties, such as uh, Rings of Power, they've really only been good with uh, The Boys and um, Invincible. Invincible. Uh, so I was kind of expecting them to drop the ball on this one. In fact, they released a little clip, right, of this uh, T-60 uh, armor coming down, and it, it just didn't look right. The dialogue looked off. A lot of people gave it shit for that clip. I am happy to report that that is uh, not the show. The show, to me, was um, fun. It was violent. There's plenty of really good world building. There's great dialogue. There's interesting characters. I also like the premise. The premise, if you're a video game player, it's going to be very familiar with you. Um, and I think there's some good overall... Um, they, they balance comedy in there as well with how wacky this world is. I mean, we're talking about Pip Boys and Fallout and Fallout Boy and all that stuff. And uh, one of the standout ones was what we assumed, Goggins. Goggins as the ghoul is amazing. And he definitely uh, does some heavy lifting here yeah. and just fascinating to watch. Um, I'm intrigued with the premise after the first four episodes. I do feel like a little bit been here, done that kind of thing as a video game player. But I, I do want to know what's going on with these particular vaults. So if you're like a mainstream watcher and you've never delved into the fallout series i think you're really gonna like this i think that this is good for not only fans staying true to the series but also brand new people that have no idea what's going on with the kind of dark sinister vault tech stuff like man, this this kind of rat in a cage kind of thing can get a little out of control with experiments uh we've seen some of that in the games if you played it as heavily as we have um but i think new viewers coming in are going to be fascinated by that so overall a great start and potentially uh, one of the best video game adaptations uh, on screen. So we saw the look and feel of it. It looked great, and it definitely pays off here. Um, so, yeah, I'm just interested in the next four episodes and seeing how, you know, this mystery box kind of unveils itself. But I think I've seen enough to declare it. This is a really good adaptation uh, into live action, and there's some talent definitely uh, here. What do you guys think of Fallout? That's, I, so my recommendation is to definitely go out and watch it. Start watching it. Whether you're a fan of Fallout or not, I think it's engaging enough TV. There's plenty of action. There's plenty of gun battles. There's, there's interesting, creepy creatures in the world, and I think it'll satisfy. As the four episodes we watch, or... or just doing the first one. Well, that's all we can review, no, right, Joe? Well, I thought we were going to break it down. Okay. Well, right now, the four, I'm really liking this. The story's, the story writing's great. I don't mind switching paces, like different characters, going back to the vault and finding out yeah, that Yeah, tell mystery. us a little bit about that. So That one was uh, with Norman. Like, uh, something went... Okay. What I mean is that there or? are three there are three storylines yeah. that uh, that the series jump between. We've got the Brotherhood character, we've got a Vault Dweller, and we've got Goggins character, which is yeah, the ghoul. Lucy, That's all I meant. Oh, I thought you meant like breaking. Yeah. So uh, like switching up into those three categories, I don't mind because I'm intrigued in those three stories as well. I want to know more of what's going on, so I don't feel as bad. It's like no, go back to this, go back to that. Um, the world building in this, like, even though it's like 
shitty, but it feels like this is the wasteland. This is like you're playing the fucking game. And even I had that mentality. He's like, oh, you need to go pick some stuff up. It's like, take everything. Pick, pick. Yeah. So, yeah, Joe's, Joe's a loot whoring games, and he literally like, has why everything. are you leaving that behind? You can't tell, but he's actually wearing the Fallout. Here, <laughs> okay, show the back, because uh, I, I taped it, it ta- on there. The back, well, yeah, 117. On. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I couldn't fit in any anymore. Last time, me and Joe both put it on for our review of Fallout 4. Um no, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, but like you, I was surprised about the gore in the beginning. I did not expect that from yeah. the show, but I'm loving it. It was like I think yeah, Amazon got a little brave with I was the like, boys, okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, I like this. I like yeah. this. And the comedy, it, it's it's not too much. It doesn't overstay mm-hmm. its welcome. I'm, I'm loving the show. Yeah, I mean it's it's a tough balance too because Fallout is. You know, it doesn't take itself too seriously all, mm-hmm. all of the time. And so it's actually pretty difficult to balance all these things. I think they're doing a really good job. Um, there's there's a fourth storyline. I think when you're following the main three characters of the show and like that fits. I saw actually a really interesting meme that kind of explains it where it's like one of the characters is the hardcore role player. One of the characters is the murder hobo. And one of the characters is no shit about the universe yeah. and just sees some cool armor and is kind of lost in there. And that, that's, that's developing really well. <laughs> There's a, a fourth storyline that I am now, like right now, getting interested in. And before last three episodes of like, I don't care. Mm. And that's the... Okay, so, so in, in episode four, it's hooking you on that last on one. On that last one. And it's only because I think, and you know, maybe it's going to be one of those things that, that could actually end up being my favorite storyline yeah uh it's just if i'm going to nitpick something that maybe i think that they're not doing well because i think they're doing everything here really well yeah uh, i mean the, I, I, agree. I, I think the humor is good the world building is good it feels like Very a fallout surprised. property and it feels like it's made by people that you know appreciate the universe and understand the universe there it's not go. and then so we know that to be true right we know that the the showrunner the writer and director is a major fallout fan well, a lot of people got yeah. confused i think uh there's a certain group of people that try to influence people to say oh these guys are like halo they don't know what they're talking they didn't play the games and they took quotes and shit out of context they're, they're, they were not here to please the fans those kinds of things and it turns out those people were wrong and they were already taking them out of context because the guy did play through the original some game by the way people don't know how to read or are media illiterate <laughs> and it's just like that's the kind of thing that they're looking for but it's like this is clearly made by people who know the universe they've got their own vision for it not everyone's going to look at it and say this is what I view when I see Fallout so yeah. there's going to be people that don't love it right. and that's fine I just think that this is close enough for me that I'm not sitting yeah. there going ah, no, this no, isn't Fallout this isn't, this isn't, this isn't, this. yeah exactly yeah think, so like yeah. I think this is close enough where I think that newbies or experienced people are going to enjoy it and uh after as of episode four, mm-hmm. um, you know, I was kind of liking it. Uh, I really loved it. The first thirty minutes was yeah. a killer, yeah. like in this thing. And then it kind of slumps a little bit. By the end of episode four, is like cool. That last storyline that wasn't doing it for me is doing it for me now. And so I think that right now the the show is running on all cylinders. Joe, do you want to watch the next four? Are you of excited course. to watch the next four? We, like I was gonna say, we have our main quest, but then all these side quests I'm still interested in. I was like, okay, yeah. these are actually some good side quests. And in fact, it's yeah. funny that the, the main character actually picks up a main quest. She kind of <laughs> runs into one like the video game. It's yeah. like, all right, now you have to escort this guy to this particular yes, thing. Yes, I want to go watch him, so we got to finish this so we can watch more. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with Alex. Okay, yeah, good. yeah. This is not so, one of them where you know there's a lot of like if. I don't that... want to watch this, and if I wasn't working on this, you know, <laughs> yes. for for here, I would watch it. I actually do want to watch it. Look at that! I'm so happy. Uh, you know, it's good to bring you guys good news, right? We we shit on things when they deserve it, and we praise things when we, they deserve it. And I think that the Fallout TV series so far uh, it deserves a little bit of praise. It is definitely up there. I'll say this: uh, the Last of Us TV show was really, really good. Mm-hmm. We gave it very high ratings. But to me, they had it a little easy, right? I mean, that is a award-winning story written by Neil Druckmann and produced by Neil Druckmann. So you just had to not fuck it up. And you just had to get some good, talented actors to act it out. And I think that's what they did. They stayed close to the source material. They involved the creators, and they got it done. What I'm saying is that I feel like Fallout here has it a little harder, Right. The difficulty curve is a little harder because it's like, what storyline do you go with? Do you have the original Fallout creators on board? These other things that these guys lack that the Last of Us HBO TV series had. And it's still being executed at a very high level, yeah. staying true to the video games, bringing that that gore and action and not shying away, not making it 
I don't know, too many times I feel like studios and, and companies clean up. They feel like, oh, I don't like that part of this video game. Let me clean it up. No, they're not cleaning anything up. You know, they are using all the stuff from the universe. It's violent. It's uh, fun. And it's treated with respect. And it's just like, yeah, this is... This is what it's like to live in the wasteland and that sort of juxtaposition between the attitudes of the vault dwellers and how they're hey, we like, like, we're going to fix walking America. around fucking around like idiots, <laughs> yeah. basically, and yeah. then smashing that right with the reality of what's going on in the wasteland. And that play on yeah. is just done perfectly in these three characters. So. Uh, hopefully they go through more conflict. We get a little bit of a transformation by the end of episode four. I don't think it's a full transformation. I'd like to see a little bit more for our vault dweller. Uh, but we'll get to those here in a moment where we break down each episode. Let's go ahead and give a premiere rating. So if we were to aggregate all of the first four episodes um, and give it a rating, I'm going to go. I'll start first. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, I think. I'm going to go with an 8 out of 10 because I think it's done really, really well. Some episodes are higher. Some episodes, like you said, maybe kind of dragged yeah. a little bit, had some, some sagging there, but it always picks it back up. It's always at very high quality. And um, I think when you take it on the whole, so far it's been pretty consistent. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. What about you? I agree with that. I'm going to go with an 8 as well. I really like the set design. It looks beautiful. The music oh, yes. and like... Just the, everyone's Dude, acting. didn't that look like just like Megaton or a different <laughs> version of Megaton? Yeah. Like, there's like fucking jet, like buildings are made out of jet fighters. I just love the the aesthetic yeah, of everything. Yeah, it looks so fucking good it right looks now. So it good. looks like they didn't ex like they spent a lot of money on this, and you could definitely tell. Yeah. the actors are doing a great job with this. Uh, Seeing the the junk gun was pretty fun. Yes, <laughs> the little, there's a little baby, the little baby leg. <laughs> It's That's right okay. out of the video it's, it's game. Cool. They're using stim packs, yes. and they're working just like the video game where you're like, well, well wait a minute. Wouldn't there be inter – shut up. It's a stim nope, pack. You don't worry about and it. It works it's like the video you game. Stab yourself and I like that. Yes. I like it. And again, like done stuff like that, you're like, okay, I'm going to wave my hand over. It. Right. It's whatever. I'll mm -hmm. let it go. But it is a good watch. I highly recommend this one so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm right with you guys. I think that it started strong, slumped a little bit in two and three, but not so much I was disappointed no. like or hated the show by any means. And I think it's really picking up on episode four, so I think eight is right about where I'm at. So Damn, the sets are so good. The fucking props, whoever made all these props, like their pit boys are so fucking sweet. Like, I yeah. want one. And, uh, and yeah, it really comes through. Um, and even though a lot of these little unfolding story bits are similar to what we've played in the video games already, or hell, since Fallout is this post-apocalyptic world, it is similar to a lot of things we've already seen in media, mm -hmm. yet still having a little bit of that freshness. And I just, I can't wait to share the series with like my girlfriend or somebody who does not know anything about Fallout because I think all that, that mystery of, wait, wait a minute, uh, there's more to these vaults than just, you know, people hiding from the the nuclear war and then what the hell are all these creatures. I can't wait to see how mass audiences react to Fallout. Uh, especially this version, which is hyper violent. The gore pays off. So, yes. okay, let's go into each individual episode and give you our breakdowns. So uh, episode one starts really strong. This is uh, the end, it's called. And basically, it, we get a little bit of pre-war, pre-explosion, uh, pre-fallout stuff with the Walter Goggins character. I think his name is Cooper. Yes. And he is kind of a, I don't know, a down on his luck actor because he's having to do birthday parties. And he's got his daughter there. And he's got divorced. Yeah, she's taking everything, so he's got to make some money. And these rich assholes are kind of treating him like shit, and he has to ignore it. And 
hidden in a background on the news broadcast. It's like, how can I do the news when I don't even have, you know, so everybody's just trying to be this happy go lucky thing. And the parents are trying to distract their kids because it is unspoken that the tensions in a cold war are through the roof. And as we know, um, yeah, we are. We are in episode. We are in breakdowns. China has launched nukes, and uh, the oh, nuclear yeah. war has begun. And it was a f- great shot when, like, you see a mushroom cloud. This one scene yeah. had more motion than fucking Halo. For me, I felt it. <laughs> right? I felt so bad for Cooper's daughter and everything. Yeah. I was like, man, he I, does I, that I, cool his... story. Tell yes. us about the story. Yeah, in he's like, are you talking about like an explosion? If you see, if you could cover it with your thumb, run away. It was like, well, what happens if it's bigger than your thumb? He's like, there's no point running away. You yeah. did. And then the little girl sees the explosion. He's getting her cake, mm-hmm. and she's like, is it my thumb or your thumb? <laughs> and you just see in the Good glass point. explosion. <laughs> It's too big. And you, it zooms in on his face, and you can tell. He's like, we're fucked. Yeah. Knows. We're fucked. And I like that little explanation where it's like, uh, that, that's just a fire. But then he <laughs> sees the plume come yeah, up. Yeah, he you're sees like, just It's drop. like in slow motion. It's so cool. Yeah. I love it. And it's not just one bomb. More go off in the distance, and you're like. As he's riding off. Well, that was bad enough already, and now this is this is fallout. I love it. Yeah. Oh boy, great you, you fucking that was, scene right you, there. And if they hit that video game music right there with uh, Ron Perlman, War War Never Change. No, anyways. <laughs> uh, all right. So a uh, great opening. Wild logo smash to a 219 years later. Mm-hmm. Alex, tell us what the hell with our first character. In fact, we even get these little logo smashes. It starts with Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. So we were introduced to the Lucy character, who's a. Uh, you know, a, dwell, a vault dweller, and she's a good citizen, and she is having trouble finding a husband, so she's talking with the council in there. And, you know, the, this vault, we find out, is trading with two other vaults. There's the yeah, so Vault 32, over. and they're trading uh, with, thir- with Vault 30. No, thir- this is 33, 33 32 trading with 32. Yeah. And 31, yeah. And so these three vaults, and so she wants to go, you know, it, it's almost like a genetic trading program where it's like, <laughs> we'll give you some seeds, and we'll give you... Some seeds, some different, some different kind of stuff. So kind yeah, of seeds. Uh, and so you know, it's a really good introduction to like the vault way of life because they do mm-hmm. it in a short little scene showing like all of the stuff that they do, how they lived in this sanit- sanitized mm-hmm. bubble where they're just completely sheltered and for all of the good and the bad things for yeah. them, right? They're sheltered physically, they're safe, they've got enough to eat, but they also don't know dick about the entire mm-hmm. world or any little idealized version of America, Americana. Yeah. They they're they're taught you know what's good and wrong and and, and you know right and wrong and doing the right thing and they are very immersed in it and they're just a matter of fact in fact you know she's all like you know when she sees the guy uh from vault 32 she is like oh he is attractive because there's a thing with this other pregnant lady it's like well maybe you're gonna get shacked up with somebody or her brother character was actually so her father is the overseer of the vault we have a brother character and she's the sister character and uh she actually sees her husband to be and he's attractive and the blonde lady's like oh you you got you looked out uh, but there is this bit of uneasiness. He looks a little, a little rough, long hair, and and you start looking at these other vault dwellers, and they got tattoos, and they're dirty, and and something's not right here. But we're all at the party because this is what we're supposed to do, and something's we get the off. mandate from mm-hmm. Control to do these things, and something's off. And you'll see. I I was paying attention. Is oh, any yeah. of the Vault Thirty Two members dancing? Ain't no Vault Thirty Two members dancing. It's just like there was one lady, but she's fall. She was falling over and had no idea what to do. <laughs> and, of course, the husband-to-be uh, participates in yeah. the dance. We get taken to, uh, you know, a private room. She's like, this but before is our that, home. I just want to see, yeah. say the subtle joke that was kind of funny. It's like, what okay, it? it's going to be that kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> the guy opening the door is like, hey, something's wrong with the door. He's like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, I'm All in right. love with you. He's like, that cousin <laughs> stuff we did. Was just nothing. Cousin stuff. Yeah. I was like, wait, so did I hear that right? Yes. Yeah, I was like, yes. They, when everybody's related to everybody and there's very few matches you can make, 
Uh, apparently, they let cousins mess around with each other for but sexual that's it. stuff. <laughs> but that's <laughs> it. No inbreeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gross. Long term, and he has to come to terms with it because he probably he's legitimately in love with her. But yeah, you know, and he wants affection too. So that that was pretty funny. So then she takes him to um, their she, wedding. Their bed. wedding, and he just getting naked. Man, this guy's ready to fuck. And it's funny because she talks to him. She's like, "What's your sperm count?" You know, and this perfectly normal conversation because hey, we are here to repop. Populate the earth eventually. Transactional. Um, So, yeah, they get to fucking. And you realize, okay, this is that kind of show. They're not going to shy away from that. It's like, okay, interesting. Uh, But almost immediately, you could tell something uh, goes wrong. What gave it away? Him wiping his dick on the curtains? Yeah. He uh, has no manners. A vault. (laughs) vault. You don't see anything. You don't really see that. But I I like these little touches that this is not a... You know, a shy series. Uh, this is a matter of fact way of life. That's probably what a raider would do after after sex. Uh, and he says, "I'd want you to know um, this is the best day of my life." But he's gonna kill her anyway. And he's going. And so then a big fight breaks out. The raiders try to take over. Uh, the raiders. Vault. And that's what you see in the trailer. And it, and at first I thought, okay, because. These uh, fake vault dwellers were like, our harvest has had problems. This exchange is going to help us, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, I know. They're just putting on a show so that they can attack and take their harvest and their actual vault dwellers. They're both vault dwellers. But it turns out that they recognize them as raiders. It's raiders. And then just a fight happens and mm-hmm. breaks out. So she gets into a fight. She's, uh, she gets brutally stabbed, actually. And I'm like, that's enough to kill somebody. But she manages to uh, break glass and fucking slash his throat or slash his face, it turns out. And uh, and then you see the greater scene. Uh, the armory has been raided. Now, I will say I expected a greater kill count here. By the end, there wasn't a whole lot of kill count. There's a few scenes where it's like, you know, especially towards the end where the leader of the fake vaults say, you know, choose either your daughter or these people right here. And I was like, yes, hammer this home actually kill those people and then he chooses his daughter fortunately doesn't happen so a little little down for me but uh and the danger too that that you do see people get shot you see these raiders but they're 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 not taking it very seriously so um in fact by the end of all the carnage we see this is episode two and three 16 of them have survived and almost and most of the characters in our original vault seem to be alive yeah, so it's a small there needed to be a little bit more of a body count i think or at least um a reflection of that maybe talking about how many people you've lost mm-hmm. but anyways it's still fascinating so that all goes down and it turns out that this is a famous lady i don't know her name uh, madalva or something like something that. that and she ha- mold moldaver lee moldaver and she has some kind of history because i think he recognizes her or or some wait a minute then why didn't he recognize her he didn't recognize well she said something like you look just like your mother That's what oh she, she so recognized she i thought her dad recognized her and then well that wouldn't work because then he would know right away that these are fake but mm-hmm. and, okay so so eventually she captures a few key characters that we've learned a little bit about and she says make a decision between your daughter and these people and he does he puts his daughter in the room but she doesn't kill any of the people she just says do what you're best at run what was her purpose her purpose was very specifically she's got maybe her she- lieutenants walking around maybe looking for documents and then they capture the overseer they capture the father character yeah. who is played um by, that by f- paul yeah uh muadib <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember his name. Do you remember that actor's name? Kyle McLaughlin. So, uh, and he's taken away, which gives us uh, the aftermath. Essentially, is she wants to go after. Give her me father. back my dad. Give me back my dad. <laughs> And this is Fallout 3. It reminds yeah. me of Fallout 3, a little bit of Fallout 4. You know, the, the, the parent-son, parent-child uh, um, kind of thing, only in reverse. She's going to go out. They said, no, no approval for that, blah, blah, blah. And they're trying to um, reform and, 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 and do a power play a little bit for the new overseers. Everything's fine. Ignore all this stuff, mm-hmm. basically. But she's, like, having none of that. She gets her brother and a few other people to help her out to go to the surface. And... Um, 
Yeah. Uh, this is this is a great opening, and it's get a lot it gets a lot done. Um, and oh, she uses the stim pack from the video games to heal yep. her extremely bad stab wound, yeah. but it works like the video game. She uses a stapler, and so she's good to go, and she, you know doesn't have to worry about that. But um, and in fact, uh, as the fight's breaking out in the wedding reception, uh, the dude comes back. This, this, the, even I'm like, I don't know how the fuck that guy came back. Maybe he found a stim pack for himself and tries to finish the job by choking her out. That's when her dad shows it up. He just gashed her face. Mm -hmm. Has a dad moment. Too bad. Uh, beats his ass. I thought he was going to take that shovel and just brutalize him. He, he, he wanted to yeah. drown him in the pickle brine. But he drowned him in the brine. I think that would have burned his face. <laughs> and all the gashes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, he does say it. I wrote it down. I know who you are. And she goes, everyone knows who I am. So so it doesn't make sense. So I guess he just wasn't paying attention and didn't know. I don't think he recognizes her. He just. I know he, who you are. Uh, like as a reputational thing. If mm, she's the most okay. fearsome bandit yeah. of all, then, I, you know, it's like she says, everyone knows who I am. So yeah, like, maybe he gets communique on, on his, he's yeah. the overseer. He gets messages from the other vaults or who knows what vault tech itself whoever's yeah. in charge of this program anyway the lady doesn't kill the group gives them a chance to run away and i think pretty much all of them make it yes no, yeah, only yeah. a single one dies i don't like that wish a few people there would have died a little bit more brutal it would have given her a little more she motivation lost her eye. Too. the pregnant lady lost her eye that's, that's the that's best that we brutal. got with a fork <laughs> Uh, it would have given her a little bit more motivation to go out there get revenge find this fucking lady and, and kill her and you know get her dad back but but maybe they did that as a setup for who this lady is. Maybe this lady's not exactly as bad as we're led to believe. Even though she does, this, this is definitely oh, yeah. bad. But maybe <laughs> there's a reason for it. And she's like, well, fuck all these people. These people are bad. And we'll and learn about that. She's got me intrigued. So what I'm happens next? More. So the dude gets. Uh, uh, so then we story switch. Tell us about the Brotherhood. Maximus. Yeah, they're introducing this new character. I mean, they're, so they're doing the the whole brotherhood. They're explaining the how how there there's clerics at the top, and then there's knights, and then squires. There's squires, and then there's the he's even below squire. He's um, doo doo boys like a staff. <laughs> yeah, and so he's his doo -doo job boys. is latrine duty, right? He's yeah. he's a shit digger, and so he's just constantly going. And he digs the hole, and he puts the doo doo in there, and he digs another hole, and the doo doo goes in there, and. And they make a point to get him near that doo-doo and have that yeah, there's the flies the CGI around flies him. everywhere all, all the time. He gets mad and he's like slapping doo-doo around. <laughs> yeah, so he you know, he's abused by all of the other recruits. They don't necessarily like him. He's got a friend um who's kind of helping him get through all this stuff. Um and yeah, just a, kind of an introduction of what the, the Brotherhood of Steel uh, are in this world. Yeah, it's a really cool shot too. The uh the fucking uh flying uh vehicle comes over, seems like a different faction or maybe a different battalion. They actually have power armor. It's oh shit, is that the T sixty? Or do they say T seventy? No, I think it's T sixty. Yeah. Um and they're they're walking over and guys when the when the when the T sixty show up the and he looks at the armor with admiration we get a little flashback him as a kid so and we get a little bit of scene why did you join the brotherhood he's like to fucking beat it get revenge on the people that hurt me and my family and you can tell that you know uh, the brotherhood at some point saved him and he looks up to the brotherhood but then when he joined he realizes oh well. Yeah. This is not exactly what I thought. I thought they were out there to protect and bring order to the wasteland. And they're kind of just jerks concerned with, you know, obtaining the most fancy technology and all the relics and stuff. And I like that. So one of the video games, I think it was uh, it was a Fallout 3 or 2 that had the Brotherhood as, uh, you know, good guys. But I like the traditional Brotherhood where they're a little mixed, you know. They're yeah. selfish and they're assholes and they have their own bit. And that's the one that we got here. So I think it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Um it's a mature show. I mean, they don't they don't mind showing, you know, this kind of stuff. So anyways, his friend there who takes who is pretty much his only positive of hanging out with the Brotherhood. Uh, she gets selected to uh, join this faction, maybe get some power armor, get elevated to a squire or something like that. And uh, but it turns out somebody booby trapped her, 
Their boot. Boot in the morning. She like cuts her foot open, and she's not going to be able to do what you did. And there's a little bit of a moment where it's like, well, is it is it our guy that he's kind of mad and jealous that his friend's leaving, wants did to keep he her here? It? Did he do it? <laughs> Everybody thinks he did it. He thinks they did it. And so he gets called into the office. That's where we get a little of his backstory, and they basically christen him to take over her position and become the squire. And, uh, yep. <clears throat> and so then after that, we go back to the show. So it's a little, it's interesting because I like this. It's like, okay, cool. We're getting a little bit of a, a no complete stories for that little segment. Yeah. It's great. And, and since brothers are supposed to be good guys, but I like them more like this morally gray. So you can kind of have an empire situation like a Finn where you see a perspective of a stormtrooper, and then he's kind of being disillusioned yeah. with this group. <clears throat> and ultimately later on, he kind of goes a wall in on his own and uh, tries to become what he thought the brotherhood was actually uh maintain their ideals and be this knight in shining armor with hilarious results that we'll talk about back in the shelter uh they help her sneak to the surface she has a great moment with her brother you know you're gonna come with me he's like I i'm too chicken <laughs> He knows what he is, Joe. Yeah. At least he's honest with himself. That's he's funny. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to survive out there. He's a tiny he's little guy, too, and he kind of hid when shit was going down, so he's, he's just feeling he's it. He's not but, built for it, yeah. But you can tell he's a good guy, and he's like, helps her sister, and, you know, does, does the right thing there, and they help her escape, despite them getting in trouble. So, um... What else? Uh, oh, then we switch over to the um, cool. yeah. They're searching for the glasses, uh, so they get a transmission, and they're like, "Who are we chasing?" And it's this guy who has escaped. Name drop Enclave. So if you don't know the Enclave, this is kind of a Brotherhood faction with with power armor and technology. It's the rem. Should I say? Yeah, it's the remnant of the U.S. government, and they are bad guys, or at least were bad guys in a lot of the video games. And so like a, a foil for the Brotherhood or just a different faction that's very dangerous. So apparently um, they're doing experiments and uh, they're killing puppies if they don't weigh. So fuck these guys. Immediately you're like the Enclave, bad guys. And one of these scientists takes uh, pity Um does this happen in episode nope. one? No, that's no. episode two. I don't want to dump. Yeah, I don't this one go just too far uh, into describes that. the guy and says, "This guy's on the run." Fo that's it. This is our target. We're searching for, yes. and you can also see the Brotherhood has child soldiers. They have no qualms about what this is. They will do what's necessary to further their goals. Um, and it is fucking high propaganda. This is almost religious, like you know, where you have priests and shit like that. It's it's cool. Um, I do want to say, you know, with the, the helicopter and the weight and the consoles and the technology, seeing the suits in first glance, they are <clears throat> absolutely ridiculous looking and somewhat they're weightless, like you know, when they're moving around, you know, because yeah. they are costumes so wasteless until you grow accustomed to them. And now I feel that as if a space marine from four, Warhammer 40K can work on screen. It, it takes a little You're bit. Like, I, don't know. I don't think Alex agrees with me with that face he makes, but he makes yeah. faces all the time. I think that I, what I'm trying to say is I'm appreciative that they didn't reduce the power armor like they did in Warcraft the movie mm. and try to sanitize the world to make it more realistic. No, fuck that. You know, now there are moments where the power armor looks bad in this series and there are moments where it looks good. But when you're spending time with it, like we do here, I ultimately bought it and I said, you know what? This I'm going to provide as proof to Henry Cavill and the producers of the Warhammer 40,000 series. Do not change the Space Marine power armor. It can armor. be done. It can be done <laughs> as it's done here, but do it better. There are certain shots where it has a little bit of weightlessness to it. And maybe that's going to be achieved with CGI or whatever. Um, but here they try to do mostly practical, which gets them in trouble sometimes. And then they do switch to CGI for other other bits. But anyways, um, we get so we do all this. And that's when we get the guy uh, shot with the jump jet weapon, yes. the baby foot gets shot on some guy. And it's like, what the hell? What is this scene? And we have. A great ass scene. This is a great way to end it. This is why I think with everything, it, conveying the information and going between these three storylines, I love this episode. It's a great debut. 
because we get an introduction. We got some Southern talking cowboys. They're going to a mutant's grave, and they're talking about oh, he one could be, last heist. We need uh, this guy. He's a badass. He, he's a badass. He knows where. He knows the area. And they're like, "What are you doing? You can't do this." And it's like, "Well, we brought this chicken because feral ghouls will just go right after a chicken. They they can't control themselves." And I love how they raise a tomb like the cowboy shit and Wild West, and they they're like yank it open. He can't quite see because it's dark in I there. I love that horror element. The Comes hand. Out. Yep. I'm like, so man, they know how to set a scene, and it's just a cool ass scene. So Goggins comes out as the ghoul, and um, they tell him. You know, he's like, you know, trying to, he'd been in there a while. And they tell him about a bounty for this uh, enclave uh, guy that's run. And, uh, and well, Western thing has happened. <laughs> <laughs> he basically turns the tables on him and just blows him away and uh, has some smart dialogue, some danger to it. There's grit, there's dirt, there's darkness, there's style, there's... Um, Good dialogue and good acting from Goggins. So, um, kills all those motherfuckers and basically takes on the job himself. He's going to make all the money. And uh, kind of sticks the leader in the grave that he mm -hmm. was in. And then, uh, then Moldover recognized after? Why do I have that as a question? Mark? Is there an ending scene there where Moldover is talked about? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, what did you guys think of the episode? This one is going to be a nine for me. Great entry, uh, introduction to everyone. Um, I love the action scenes, especially with the ghoul. That was a fucking perfect. Seeing the various, the the, the jump jet was pretty fucking funny. Mm -hmm. Just seeing and stab a little baby doll leg. And, they, and then they, a screwdriver and like a bunch of other yeah, stuff later. That yeah, that too as well. <laughs> they, they did the fan service well enough. Isn't that so super in your face? That fans of the game will know what weapon that is. And casual viewers are like, that's unimportant to the story. It's just a gun that killed somebody. Yeah, and I'm also liking the little Lucy character. It's not like crazy over the top like fish out of water. It's like, this is believable. Mm -hmm. I, I like her character and uh, Maximus as well. Mm -hmm. so, nine for me. It was a one. horrible clip that they released to the internet because they had the two worst element, the two most out of context elements. Lucy and everybody's like, God, this dialogue is so bad. It's like, Bro, don't you understand what's happening here? She's sheltered. She's in the fallout. So that's the way she talks because that's how she's been risen, you know, and raised. And then the whole, you know, seeing this ridiculous suit in motion for the first time, it's going to look goofy until you get used to yeah. it. But I will agree it did look extra goofy without a jetpack. I need an actual jetpack instead of just these little, little. jump jet, mm -hmm. flamethrower jump jets. Yeah. Alex? Uh, I think the, the backstory stuff, the ghoul stuff, the Lucy stuff, all really great. Uh, I At this point, I'm not sold on Maximus. I'm not, it's not that I don't think anything is bad. It's just like I think everything else is being done at a much higher level. Mm -hmm. And it, as episode one was, was going, it's like this is the part where I could take it or leave it. So um, I still think it's a nine, though. I think it's really, really strong. I think the vast majority of this episode is really strong. It just takes a little bit for the Brotherhood stuff to kind of pick up. Yes, uh, nine out of ten for me, too. Um, and I... I'm actually kind of surprised that we got the Enclave mentioned this early. I'm excited as a fan. Like I said, um, descendants of, you know, the pre-war American government. They were bad guys in Fallout 2 and 3. And um, if I don't know if they're going to go that hard in that direction, like who leads the faction and stuff. That would be pretty interesting. But they're, I think it's intriguing from a lore perspective. And, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know about the if the timelines work. I'm not a huge Fallout nerd. I'm sure I I don't I I'm, I'm not sure if the F Enclave is around at this time. But if if that's the case and they got the dates wrong or whatever, this could be a new Enclave, a, a new like after they've been destroyed or whatever from previous games. I don't know. I, and frankly, I don't care. If they do need to mess around with a little bit of the timetables from what we've seen in the game to what there is in the show and it making sense, um I think do it because I think the show is great. Yeah, so, that, yeah changing dates, totally fine. Changing how uh, hyperspace works uh, makes you a giant moron. That's uh, uh, the hold on maneuver you're talking about. Huh? Yeah. Let's oh. not talk about Star Wars. <laughs> okay. If we're gonna, then please don't pull a fin. Uh, by the end of this series, I don't want to see motherfucking uh, you know, Finn screaming, Ray! Lucy. And then go nowhere with this character. Please have some 
satisfying character arc for uh, our our uh, Maximus. All right, episode two, the target. Um, so here's where we were talking a little bit about um, CX four hundred four is the doggy that he saves. He he is lighter than ten pounds, but he doesn't want to kill the doggy. And I'm like, good on you. And uh, fuck this faction, the Enclave, who are just killing dogs and they're being basically bred as weapons and and attack dogs. And this is crazy technology. Lots of experiments going on here. And uh, great use of music, I wrote, throughout the whole series. I forgot to talk about that in the review. These classic old-timey, old radio songs. They're using them all, including uh, Set the World on Fire. Everybody remembers that song. And I love it. So it's shown briefly without any context what is so important that this guy has alex what is it it's a glue blue thing it is a glowy uh, thing he puts it in his neck almost like really a know pill. What it is, i would just... i'm going to make an assumption that it has something to do with power like a new yes, power so, source yeah. or something anyways he injects it into himself um and he's kind of you know, he develops a relationship with the dog. I'm not really sure if he's trying to hide the dog. No, I guess that's just his little bed, a little area in his office. That he the was dog trying to hide. Oh, he was hiding the dog. Oh, which is why they're hiding the dog. Yeah, that's why that's they pull the alarm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the dog comes out and kills his partner, uh, you know, for uh, trying to attack the man, which leads our character to be like, all right, fuck this. I want to save my dog's life. And maybe I've already had problems with what I'm doing here. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to escape. So he goes outside and we get this scene with a, a turret. I'm like, wow, that's cool. And then, and then he goes, and I'm like, holy shit. And he's running and the dog is running. And, and then he goes around the corner, and Joe and Joe goes. <laughs> he looks like me in Call of Duty. Yeah. This this is he goes. Joe goes. This is me on every shoot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you think that was it's supposed like to be a funny? Sh- I I don't know because the like, fucking <laughs> robot turret misses every shot, like thousands of shots <laughs> yeah. all yeah. across yeah. front, sideways, everywhere. It's like, are you making like a silhouette right. every time? Like, yeah. and that, the fact that it is like a phalanx, <laughs> like you'd see on aircraft carriers that go. <gasps> Like, it's too much. Yeah. It's too this much. is old scientist. You, you, you're going to hit him. Yeah. So I don't know if they were. I, I, maybe he's like, this is maybe a joke that it's I don't joke. understand. But, like, this makes them look completely incompetent. The and enclave. I think this does <laughs> does disservice to your world building, What's in my like, opinion. like, uh... Oh god! <laughs> Idiocracy with the two turrets start shooting each, each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I, look, there are moments where it does do these little things yeah. where you're like, oh, I wish it didn't do that because everything else is really, really yeah. good. But but maybe it's on purpose. I'd love to hear from the director. Anyways, uh, then we get a scene where she's already out in the world. So oh, previously I forgot to mention that she goes out into the world. <laughs> And they try to stop her, but uh, she gets out. She says no. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she goes out into the Where world. We and then here we see her at a beach. So apparently these vaults are, are close to the coast um, and uh, the West Coast. And uh, she's at a campfire. She lights a fire in the middle of night. And I'm like, you have no idea what creatures are up here. We do because we played the game. <laughs> but you don't light a fucking fire. And that's exactly what uh, this scientist. Again, she's new, so I was like, okay, I believe it. Yeah, so the dog actually, you can hear it growling, and you think, oh, is she going to be attacked by a mutant dog? But it turns out to be the dog that we know from Four. our scientist character. Saves her, kills an irradiated cockroach that was probably going to fucking bite, bite her, her with her mandibles and sh- with their mandibles. And uh, the scientist is already sitting in the chair, you know, it's like kind of a bit of a badass. And I like the way, you know, he, he's got some good dialogue. He's like, you should know better. He just discovered Bigfoot. It's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you're a vault dweller? Oh, my God. Like, great scene. So you're saying scene. they do exist? No, they don't. This yes, is a work of fiction. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, and then, uh, so uh, we get that. And then we get a great scene, another one on the on the copter. And uh, we've got Maximus, who is the squire. He's got this big fucking pack. And you've got my lord. He's a, my lord to the, the, the guy in the power armor. And he's just staring at him on... Uh, you know uh, uncaring and he's like my lord titus and he's like you know rips off his cod piece and he's like clean it and he's, he's like oh fuck this guy's an asshole shit mm-hmm. and what have i gotten myself into 
And uh, and then he goes, put a shutter down. I want to shoot something. I'm <laughs> so bored. I'm fucking bored. I'm like, yeah, this is this is cool. So he's an asshole. So they're like, sir. He's like, oh, you're too far from the top. I don't care. And so they set him down. And the squire goes first. It's funny because he straps the squire. I'm like, what is going on? So he straps the squire to him like Alex strapped OJ to his back. <laughs> so I'm like, little baby OJ on Alex as they jump together. Uh, that was our Death Stranding of Death review. Stranding. Yep. Go check that out. And, um, yeah, he doesn't really give a shit about his squire. He's no, kind of no. treating him oh, he's a huge like a fucking, dick. you know, punk. And, uh, and then... Uh, what happened? So he goes off into the world to kill somebody uh, or kill something. And, and they squirt. just so happen to be where the, the, the It's scientist exactly the was. spot where the A little convenience. Yeah. Uh, this, this, uh, little. I'll allow it because everything else is, is such at high quality. If you had a bad show, this would be a big one. And you'd be like, yet another thing. Out of nowhere, he's just like, put me down right here because yeah, yeah, like, I'm bored. I was like, hey, you found the camp. Right. Like, and he, wa he walks a little bit yeah, and they like, eventually do find the camp. <laughs> Um, well, this is the same place that, uh, so eventually the scientist walks off from the vault dweller mm -hmm. and, uh, with his dog and there seems to be like a concrete cave, maybe an overpass, whatever, uh, some, some area that he can't see. And that's where we get the scene with, um, setting up the danger of a bear. A fucking mutant bear, rather. Yeah. yeah the, uh, four goes in there, brings out like a hand. He's like, oh. Let's get the fuck out of here. He's eating a can of Spam. Cram. 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 That's right. It's Cram. Uh, and they do have all these great little... They're using the labels directly from the video game. And I love it. Abraxo, Stim Packs. I haven't seen R R Rad X yet. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there... We did see Psycho, I think. Sugar one guy. And did we just see that comic book? That barbarian? Yes, the barbarian yes. Uh, cartoon yeah. that was cartoon also that was in also the Yay! Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so then that's they happen to walk right into the scientist camp, and when he he notices uh, that there's a bear, or he can detect it, and he's like, "Fuck!" I like this. Like one of the first things he says, he's like, "Fuck!" And he's like, "All right, Squire, go in there. Your act of bravery to earn your name." And he's like, "But you're the one with the power armor." Get in there. Gun, yeah. yeah. But uh, so, but thankfully the bear is behind the power armor guy. Great scene. Bear chases him, fucking mauls him. He's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. He His whole demeanor he runs changes. I like, get in there, Squire. He's like, oh shit, fuck, 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 fuck. What happened? He's running. <laughs> and it it starts to maul him a little bit. Uh, but thankfully, um, Maximus does manage to shoot the bear in the head. Headshot. I'm like, that's nice. not how it works in the video game. It's not. But it's okay. <laughs> Headshots. Well, I guess a little bit. You get a little bit of damage with the VAT system. Guess... By the way, at one point, I did see the VAT system pop up, and you see the individual uh, health mm -hmm. on the various body parts. So I like that Easter egg. I think that's in the next episode. But anyways, he's like, you don't. You should have gotten like at least a couple shots. He's like, okay, that's fine. He's like, one shot. He's like, more that's than one. It was, I think bear. it was two. I think he did a double tap, but still, we need more. Um so he saves him after he gets injured, you know, injured. He's like, takes his helmet off, and it's a, a cameo from Michael Rapport. Rapport. Rapport, and he plays his character perfectly. He seems to play a character like this all the time. Just a fucking piece of shit asshole. And he's like, you dumb motherfucker, you. They're you gonna string fucking, you up by your lungs. You, you realize when you get in, oh, this guy's just a piece. I just like, just kill this motherfucker. And you can see it in the scoring face. Oh, for sure. He was gonna help him with the stem. He's like, give me that stem, you stupid fuck. So they're and gonna it, do what to me? He's like, <laughs> Like, this is this guy's the dumbest shit ever. Like, don't fucking be so mean to the guy that's supposed to be like can pull you out. So he basically says, "Man, fuck this guy," and lets him die. He yeah. says, "You don't deserve that armor," and uh, he watches him die. Just lets him die, which dead. is good. I'm oh. fuck that guy. So Titus is dead, and it's Maximus that's left. But Maximus is now going to pose as Titus. Mm -hmm. Takes his clothes, puts on, the suit. puts on the suit. You can't tell. The voice just sounds like the voice, so he's going to do that. Then we get a great scene with Underwear Guy. Joe, tell us about Underwear Guy. Oh, I thought we were still at the... No, this no. Is where they cut away oh, after he goes, you don't be deserve the... that armor. Okay. And she's walking. Excuse okay, me. then uh, she's walking around. Then we get this uh, close up on this guy just trying to get some water. He's in this weird ass, raggedy ass underwear. <laughs> she's like pointing guns. Like, hey, I just need directions. What's, what's going on? <laughs> like, hey, uh, don't shoot. No, 
he's a funny looking guy, whatever. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you some directions. Here's some water. I'll give you a little sip. He ends up drinking the whole thing. <laughs> when you're handed a bottle of water, you, you learn to take it. it. You like, drink it. If you're not thirsty, you drink it. He's like, well, where are you going? He's like, well, you could be with me. And All this could be yours. <laughs> he's like, well, first he's like, I'm real sick. Like, or say not, after yeah, he's okay. like, I'm real sick. You won't have to put up with me for long. It's like, All this could be yours. <laughs> I like it. It's world building, it silly is. characters, wackiness. This is the good kind of comedy, mm-hmm. right? That's acceptable. So, anyways, we cut back to Maximus. He gets in the armor and he saves a guy. And he's playing out his little knight fantasies. He's now the knight. <laughs> Unfortunately, Joe, why are you laughing? <laughs> This was a, I was like, I knew some kind of mix up was going to happen, but I didn't expect this. Yeah, he yeah, saves man. a guy he shouldn't have been saving. Well, who, who, what did he say? He saved a chicken fucker. Yeah, he saved a dude that was. He's like, what did he do? He's like, well, shit, I, I, don't kill me, don't kill me. I caught him fucking my chickens. And he's like, damn, I'm now a chicken fucker's savior, I guess. And the guy runs off. We do see him later on in a different episode, but um, again, ri- uh, then we go to Philly. Uh, we got really cool sets, yep. buildings made out of jet fighters, scrap heats, buses, uh, j- uh, passenger jet liners. Uh, great. It looks like megaton. I'm like, oh, fuck, is, are we going to get a choice to blow this uh, city up or save it? <laughs> but it was cool. And then she goes to Ma's Rarities. And she's like, oh, my God, you fucking love the This is the clip, the I guess, here. everyone hated. I was like, it makes yeah. sense. Well, the, 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 the dialogue with Ma first before the uh, OK Corral shootout at, at the uh, at front was really good. Ma's a great actress, a buyer. She's like, holy shit, you are an actual fall dweller. Bar, go in here and see this shit. She name drops, though, the lady that stole her father. And she's like, get get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. You know, So some, something's going on there. And then that's when we, Joe's, Joe called it out there. Um, what happens? And which- she runs into the scientist. Uh, Will oh, Sig happens right, right there. Again, another convenience. Motherfucker, everybody's in the same spot, the same right. Well, this was a little bit more believable because the scientist has to go there, I guess. And yeah, that's the only town going, in the entire uh, region. That's so what I was like, like, okay, this one is fine. Not like, hey, I'm bored. Land here. Yeah. Okay, that was yeah. too far. <laughs> so Will Zig, and she basically, Ma, is uh, apparently in an underground railroad kind of thing where she's uh, supposed to take charge of his transport safely somewhere. Because he's got something he's very got something valuable. Important. And then off the corner, across the street, you see the ghoul. It's like, I've been looking for you. You're the scientist guy. Excellent scene. This fucking yep. thing makes the show for me. Uh, where, um, you know, the the part that they showed in the, in the you know, clip wasn't the good part. This was the good part. Um, he just calls out. Right there in front of everybody, the whole town, like some people run, some people just watch. And then uh, Ma's like, I'll offer you, yeah, I'll offer anybody, kill this motherfucker here. Because he blows off the scientist's leg. A thousand caps. And he wants to take, and Ma won't let it. And she's got a gun trained on him. Other people show up with their guns, and then he just starts firing That's his. slow-mo, though. And the slow-mo and those rounds, they show it. Mm-hmm. There's one one round goes through a guy's chest, creates a fucking hole, slams into the guy's head behind him. His cabeza explodes like a melon, and people are flying left and right. And it's just it's a badass. It's it's Fallout. It's Wild West. It's Clint Eastwood. It's all mixed together. And Goggins does a great job. He was a, he's like he even eat some cherry fucking tomatoes and at some point he does have to take cover. He can take a few hits. By the way, he's a ghoul. He's, you know he's not really living. He's half living, unliving, and he's like I'd offer you one of these cherry tomatoes, but you got a hole in your throat. <laughs> he's just so he's cool. like sliding down. <laughs> and now immediately everything goes. Arr! And I got real pissed. Because Goggins' character stabs the dog. Mm -hmm. So the dog sees that Goggins is here to take his master. And the dog comes running out. Roar jumps him. And he stabbed the dog. And I said I immediately went, boo! Yeah. He didn't need to do that. I don't like him no more, I said. I even wrote it down. 
as dog died question mark and i wasn't gonna watch no more yeah I so wish for this whole it... rest of the episode they leave you wondering because <laughs> you see a shot of the dog laying motionless he doesn't even make a whimper thankfully but it's thankfully. funny though he kills like 10 people it's like ah oh, that's funny he kills yeah, dog. Really? <laughs> fuck you man <laughs> fuck, fuck you. i'm done yes. We're, we are no longer yeah. friends and now i'm thinking to myself man am i gonna have this existential crisis right. i hate this character the he rest of the series the dog. <laughs> he killed your fucking dog the dog is so cute dog me. <laughs> But uh, and they drag it out. But uh, it, later on, we learn the dog is okay. He's whimpering, and in fact, it's Goggins' character that rescues the dog mm -hmm. and hits it with a stem pack. It works like the video game. Don't think about it. And uh, his dog's good to go. And in fact, he they become partners. And he's kind of maybe using the dog to track his master. He should have just like wrestled the dog and then put him in a cage or something. And, like, bam, he's tied up instead of but, stabbing see, it. <laughs> But that's what that's what he I would know. do. He doesn't, he doesn't and it's around. like, yeah, I mean, I know, as an audience, we're following the dog the yeah. whole time from the pup, and we don't want that to happen. But if these two characters met in that realistic way, yeah. that's what's gonna happen. Yep. And this show's yeah. like, that's what happened. But we're not gonna kill a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd heal the dog, and, the okay, dog okay. and he even pets the dog. He makes a point, <laughs> petting the dog, and the dog follows him and their friends. All right. Anyways, but before all that, um, that's where our vault dweller who stands up for, uh, you know, scientists. Ma and the scientists, he can't, he can't do this. And so she gets in the way. She about to get her ass kicked by uh, Goggins character. And that's when our third character. So all three of our storylines smack dab in episode two come together. He's the knight in shining armor, though he's kind of shitty at it. And he has no basic training. Yeah, because that's what I thought in the clip. I was like, oh, man, how is he going to get out of this one? It's like, okay, it's explained. He's fresh to the suit. He doesn't really know how to he use it. He doesn't know how to do anything. Stuff, yeah. So, yeah. okay, makes sense here. Um, <clears throat> and he saves her. And she smiles. And she's got those same wide eye, googly, idealistic, you know, knight in shining armor thing. And she's like, wow, that guy's great. That knight, you know, showed up. And, and he's living out his fantasy. Uh, yeah. And uh, so while that's happening, uh, Ma gets the Jim's Limbs box and fucking <laughs> sticks brutal. this brutal scene. Ooh. Just chews up his little fucking phalanges and fucking toes and foot. Uh, well, no, that shit was already blown off. Yes. Basically, the bone shards and the thing and gives him a robot leg. And she assigns Ma's like, you, you now take the quest. You're a vault dweller. I know that you're going to do the right thing. It's the only way to get your dad back. Yeah. yeah. And so send, sends average. him over there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. And then we have the fight with Maximus. And Maximus does have a gun. But he, again, no basic training. I'm, I think he should have been better with the gun. But they come up. This is a TV show excuse. Because you could just kill Goggins immediately with the gun. So I think he, like drops the gun or is not used again, to firing it again i'll kind of believe this he's like he's not used to the suit so he's like right. getting adjusted to the hand movements and stuff right. so he's maybe a firing new... a gun in yeah the suit it's is completely different. different from yeah yeah so then he drops the gun and we get a good fight scene here as uh he can't fly very well goggins mm -hmm. takes advantage of this he at one point gets uh, like he's just ripping the place down goggins is falling he's oh fuck that one actually hurt and uh, gets the upper hand because a foot gets stuck and uh, manages to, um, through Cut a like series a of things, or something. as he flies back, uh, attach some wire to him, which causes his uh, jetpack to go haywire. And he flies off in a random direction. So he gets the better of him. Um, Did the Boba Fett thing. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and then that's when he saves the dog, and we cut back to the vault dweller. She's she's um, uh, with the guy heading to the location. We actually see a CCCP satellite, like this Russian satellite, um, and uh, yeah. So the 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 show is really playing on these characters that you know but before it ends uh the doctor's like i'm not gonna make it it's like well i need to take you over there you just need to take my head brings out the the blade and he's like i already took some cyanide mm -hmm. so <laughs> cut my head off cut my head off this is a good guy he wants her to cut scene. his head off he goes i'm easier to carry that way <laughs> damn and she yep. goes okie dokie that's her thing okie dokie okay yep. uh nine out of ten i really liked it what was your score yeah i'm gonna give this one a 10 for just that scene where everyone's like met up and 
his leg getting blown off. The he, Wild West. Yeah, he, he, mm. it, it seems like an Alex like move to do. He's like, yeah, I'll bring him. He doesn't need his leg, so she blows off his leg. He's like, that's an Alex move right there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the stuff in video games <laughs> yes. or in movies where we're like, why doesn't he just do this? Yeah, well, like, he fucking does it. Mm -hmm. He does. He's like, you're coming with me. Bam, there goes your leg. And just everyone's yeah. fucking great. You're easy to transport that way. I love the music in there and the, the slow motion. And just the gore, mm. see like the puncture wounds and everything. The camera just like kind of makes yeah. a little zoom in. Mm -hmm. So nine for me. Yeah. Um, I, Wait, ten? Nine. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with an eight on this one. I didn't like any of the Brotherhood stuff in this one. I didn't like Titus. I, I get what they're trying to go for that he's just like a shitty asshole and he hates his newbies type thing. I think it's more as a humor thing. But yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It just it just wasn't it wasn't working for me. I think I he like. He actually it. also hates the fucking Brotherhood. He hates bullshit yeah. and the clerics and he's just an asshole. Yeah, so it's just like I get when you've got Michael Rappaport, you want to let him play this New Yorker Michael mm -hmm. Rappaport, but it's like it just felt out of place and. Uh, so like that that scene didn't really do it for me, but I think anything in the city when they're they're fighting, which is so well done, it really just raised everything back up. Yeah. So, good stuff. Episode three, the head, uh, referring to the head that she had to cut off. Uh, Cooper it opens it. We're back on uh, back in the day. Uh, he's filming movies and. Uh, he does this one-liner in Spanish. I forget what he says, but it's uh, very romantic. It's, like it's idealized. He's the hero. But then he kind of stops because he's supposed to shoot him. And he's like, I don't know about these rewrites, the, the script. You know, my, can I just arrest him like I normally do? Producer comes in. Turns out the original writer was a commie and he got fired. And, and so all this stuff is happening. It turns out to be like this propaganda. They want him... It's a new time for America. We'll take things into our own hands. We'll shoot him. Shoot the fucking bad guy and finish him. And uh, we don't get the payoff to this until episode four. But um, he doesn't want to kill him. Shows shows us that basically this ghoul at one point was a good guy that had morals. He doesn't want to kill. doesn't want to be the it's person the on the screen that's killed. changed people. Yeah. The wasteland changed him. <laughs> and he even says this to the vault dweller several times. It's going to, you know, it's going to change you. Um Anyways, he finds the headless man, and that's when we see um, the ghoul has a weakness. He is coughing. He has to use an inhaler, some drugs of some kind, to starve off uh, turning to into a real feral. feral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the vault dweller is carrying the guy's head by hair, by its hair for shock value. She could have put it in the bag. Yeah, there was a bag. Yeah. I was but it, thinking but that. it's a nice shot, and I know why they're doing it in shock value. And in fact, it helps to ward off raiders. I'm a badass just walking around with a fucking in. I'm not going to fuck with that chick. Anyways, and then um, do, like, interesting God thing, though. Style. It's an interesting thing. She's got the head, and the head shocks her. So it's like she touches it and it shocks her. That's why I think it was maybe a power source of some kind. Yeah. Um, but I will say, oh, that's when we see the VAT system on the Pat Pip Boy when she starts it up. And I found it quite odd that she's not squeamish at all about this fucking head. And she's like talking to the head, setting the head down. And she's being very casual with it. So I'm like, huh, is that just supposed to be played for comedy and she kind of numb to that because you'd think a vault dweller would freak out a little bit more she learned um, nothing about making fires at night right <laughs> so and then um we get the scene with maximus who is being contacted on the radio uh that his squire he tells him oh my squire died i'm okay everything's fine okay bye and we'll they're send like, you oh. a new one send no, 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 no. No. <laughs> fuck and he freaks out for no reason and breaks the fucking radio so i'm like man he didn't handle that he didn't handle that well. He, he did the whole hand solo. I was like, e everything's fine here. How, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> it's just like, you dumbass. Anyways, um, and then he goes into the city to try to fix his suit. He's got a broken part. And it's an, a, another scene played for laughs but done well. They take advantage of him. And it's like, this is five caps. He's like, I got four. And he's like, nope, five. And so he has to go get some teeth pulled and brings it back. And he's like, here, I got extra if you do it quick. And then she's like, done. <laughs> she probably didn't need to charge him nothing. That's why the price was so low. Because she's like, you're an idiot. You know, This is very easy to fix. So she fixes it, runs back because he's concerned people are going to mess with his armor. And sure enough, Shocker. we got some fucking scavengers. scavengers. She's messing with his armor. We get a fight here. And I'm like, man, you ain't in that suit back. There's too many of them. But I'm... 
I'm kind of surprised. He is scrappy, doesn't want to give up. He, he holds his own a little bit, eventually loses against these guys, but doesn't give up, grabs a fucking pipe, <laughs> goes after them again. He did the monkey man technique. Get beat what up is a the lot. Monkey man? Get oh, yeah, beat yeah. up a lot, and then at the end, beat up everyone. Yeah, magically Super become simple. better. Mm, magically <laughs> become better and beat him up. Uh, but as the, he fights him a second time, he gains the upper hand by sticking his hand in one of the arms and crushing the leader's head, you know, and it kind of demoralizes the rest of the motherfuckers and they run off. And so I'm like, oh, that's cool. And they show that shit. His yes. eyes going red and popping mm. and his head popping. And I'm like, damn, that is really cool. And this is like, all right, they're taking this shit serious. And um, and then we get the new rappers. squire dropped off. Yeah. It's the guy right. that kept beating him up. Mm -hmm. and he right. tries to hurry up and get inside the suit, gets in the suit. And so at first, like, he wants to be a little he, bit of an asshole to him since he mm -hmm. was an asshole when, when he was getting beaten up back in the day. But he eventually showed Yeah, he's like, it's not who he is because he was about to, I guess, crush his head. Crush his head because yeah. it's full of blood. Out. He's yeah. freaking him out. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what I did. I'm sorry. I beg you for forgiveness. He's like, it's not me. So he gets up. He's like, oh, come on, let's go. But he's still fucked with him a little bit. He's like, oh, clean yeah, my yeah. cod piece. Yeah. Piece of shit. yeah. Anyways, um, and then... Uh, we get new orders. Kill whoever stands in their way. Here's the other thing I have a problem with. So, big, uh, a bit of a suspension of disbelief break for the phalanx that couldn't hit him with a single shot. The other suspension of disbelief broken here is new orders. We got to kill whoever stands in our way. This is really important. This can change the entire wasteland. Why only send one knight, though? You showed four at the beginning. You should. You definitely, if it if it was because it's Maximus' story. Not the the well, show wouldn't yeah. work if they sent four and he was. Actually, the show would work. You just have to write it smarter. Yeah. You know, like eventually they get killed by the wasteland monsters themselves, and he's the sole survivor. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna do something different. But they do the stupid thing where I guess Titus is the most badass. Of them all, Didn't they and say he's like, I can handle this myself. At one point, the squire does say, hey, let's get on the radio and call for reinforcements, but we're talking about a military. The general or the cleric would be like, this is very important. Send out four soldiers now, not just, okay, send out one, and then we'll wait to see if he needs help. Anyways, but there wouldn't be a show. I thought that he said that, that each knight had to go to a different quadrant to look for the scientist guy because they don't know okay. who he is. Okay, I think they did say that actually. That's why the four knights show up. Make, make a purpose, make a point of showing the four knights. So maybe they are in different quadrants, and then once <clears throat> they get a lead, a then whiff, they'll yeah, call then in reinforcements. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Uh, we get beautiful shots of the world. I love the CGI, some of the cities underwater, and there's swamps and new new things. And in my opinion, the monsters in the world and the looks of it, and the CGI is seamless, you know, between, it, it's yeah, like a whole good. new uh, world. And uh, it's as good, if not better, than The Last of Us. Because uh, The Last of Us really, they didn't do a lot of showing monsters, and no. they kind of showed up one. The people are the it was monsters. like one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Anyways, but she loses the head to a monster, and this monster is a gulper. Uh, the, this gulper looks different than the video game gulper who uh, used the same animations as a death claw as kind of a side thing. And this one, I, I thought they did a great job on. It's kind of, but it is kind of a monster of the week thing because it takes the fucking head and it's like, oh shit, you know. And she's acting very dumb around it, it um, a little bit little convenience writing yeah. kind of thing. But anyways, um, uh, Goggins, uh, the, 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 the ghoul shows up mm -hmm. and notices that she doesn't have the head anymore. And he's like, Gulper got it, huh? And yeah. Ties her up, uses her as bait. Mm -hmm. Now, I did not expect this, but I guess I should have. We go back to the vault. So the vault is definitely going to be a part of the story. Yes. The people inside the vault. I don't know how I feel about it. At first, I was like, I don't really care about the vault no more. Maybe if we go back to the vault eventually when you're done doing this shit, sure. But they want to incorporate it now. And I think because the brother character, that ha I, I'm i okay. And I like it. It's interesting. So we go back to the vault. Gatekeeper gets reassigned. 
the cousin fucker, uh, <laughs> you know, basically, uh, he he's crying because this is his only job. He liked it. And her brother Norman uh, basically is like, "What the fuck? Why are we holding all these people that tried to kill us? In fact, sixteen of them." What in prison. do you suggest we do? Yeah, he's mm-hmm. like, but our ideals and this and that. All the vault dwellers are like, we have to show these savages who we are. I'm like, mm. and you can see some division in some of the people yes. already. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm the wife. I'm pregnant. My husband. They killed my husband. I'm now a cyclops. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> What's wrong with you people? So there's a little bit of a spiciness, a division. There's even a vote upcoming for an overseer. He is the son of the previous overseer. So I like this. Like, you could do a little bit of Game of Thrones politics here. And so initially, while I was hesitant, as this played out and we get it in other episodes, I'm I'm liking it. And plus, here is where we get the sprinkles of the mystery of Vault 31. They actually show a triangle. And so there's three vaults. We know 33, that's our vault. Then we know 32, that's the vault that the Raiders came from. And then there's 31, which apparently they said they were is where so far. he, the overseer, uh, the father character came from vault 31. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he married someone, uh, we don't Rose. know where she's from, Rose. She might be from the, we don't know where she's from. But later on in episode four, we get a little bit on her. But let's let's stay here. So uh, then, what happens? Um, yeah, he's using her as back bait. In the vault. Oh, back in the vault. Go ahead. We are back in the vault. Uh, yes. we've got a job for you after all. Oh, because he gets a sign. You know, he hates every job. He just they're trying to give him a punishment. They can't find a punishment, he's and he's care. like, "Fuck these people that were were prisoning." And oh, we got a job. Go feed them cake and shit. I'm like, why are you guys doing this? You're being dicks. Go ahead, Joe. After then, we get out the After ball. we get back to uh, the outside, Goggins is, uh, well, Cooper is uh, using her, Lucy as bait. Mm-hmm. He's like, what are you doing? He's talking about torture. He's like, I'm not torturing you. I'm using you as Another bait. Another great scene. And then this we dialogue see here is smartly written. Yeah. I ain't using you for torture. No. I'm using you as bait. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then we see the creepy creature Underwater jump thing, in yeah. and start attacking her. I'm not really sure what happens here. I wrote it. I understood it afterwards. But they made a point to show her her foot. And I was like, what is it? Does her the boots gone. Her boots there? gone. Because, yeah, does uh, the monster hate her feet? Because the monster has fingers and the fingers hate the feet. Because it made like this visceral, visceral reaction right when her foot came off. And I guess that's just because it grabbed the boot. I mean, it the was dog just bit a its little hand. awkward. Yeah. Something was going on, and it needed to be conveyed slightly better. I mm. understand what's happening, but it just was a little awkward. Because I'm like, that motherf- that thing would have killed them. K- at least got her. But whatever. So it's Goggins something. and the dog help help out. Um, she even helps and smashes a bag o- over the gulper's head. And that turned out to be the ghoul's drugs. Mm. He needs that shit. So he's fucking pissed. And uh, they don't get the, the drug retreats. Broke. Oh, by the way, we skipped over uh, the squire in the night. Find the headless body, and they're all they, they try to match up the head. They're like, "Yep, that's <laughs> that's the one." I'm like, "But no, you wouldn't know that." But okay. Anyways, um, then yeah. they start following the radiation trails. Mm-hmm. That's how they catch up to them. Kind yeah, of. and he learns that the guy actually, uh, his squire w- is talking about him. He's like, "Oh, the squire died. He was a good guy." And obviously, that's the squire in there. He's like, "Oh, yeah, good guy." Let's say something negative about him just to see what he'd say. And he's like, "Well, I guess we used to beat him up. You know, he's kind of an outcast." And but he's like, "Well," and he explains why he did it. He was the one that used to get beat up. And then when we got new people in, I. Just beat him up, and then I became popular, and then I didn't have to get beat up no more. Bullies. So we just, it just happens. It's the, the law of the wasteland. And he's like, yeah. Or like high school. Law, law of the wasteland. Or law of high school. Did you get beat up a lot <laughs> in school, Joe? Never. No, you didn't. <laughs> I know. Everybody loved Joe back then. He was the funny guy. Um, anyways, uh, then we get... Um, there's a little bit of the tease of the brother taking over. You know, the, the everybody talking about what to do with the prisoners, and the brother's like, "No, you know, why? Why do we? Why is it our responsibility?" So, um, and then uh, the guts rip the guts out. Okay, so the gulper has its guts ripped out, and I'm just a little confused at how that happened. 
I guess it was holding on to her so hard. Uh, holding it was holding on, on to so the, the squire. So the squire comes. Now, uh, again, a little bit of ride inconvenience to get all these people. They just found these beautiful locations. They're like, let's get the most used out of it so we go to the same place. The squire gets We followed eaten. the radiation. Then Follow the squire the gets eaten. And you see, like, the finger p- the fingers. fingers. Yeah. And I was thinking, I guess he was holding on pretty tight to the squire. And with the suit... He managed to pull his own guts That makes out. sense. Yeah, That's the suit is so strong. It was yeah. shown that he could throw a fucking rock, you know, five That's what I took it as. Away. Like, okay, now he's, he grabs he's, an anchor. So they use an anchor as a fish hook. So when she's being used as bait, there's a giant anchor, boat mm-hmm. anchor they're using as a fish hook. And it eats that, and it doesn't eat her. And so he, the guy in power armor sees that the hook is in its guts, grabs that, and rips all of his guts out. Okay. The hook is I in its it guts. Both. When I saw the hook, it looked like it was just on like the outside of its mouth. I'm like, okay, yeah. so that's not going to pull the that's guts. That's what I thought, too. Okay. But again, I think it needs to be filmed slightly better just to convey what's happening. A little. He saves it. Bit of comedy here. And uh, guts ripped out. Uh, the comedy from the Throws situation of them. Blech. Yeah. And they find the head. And they're like, hey, they're all happy. And the dog's still there. Mm-hmm. Dog is in it's the Vault Tech. Uh, it, it is shown that Vault Tech hired Goggins' character back in the day, two hundred more than two hundred years ago, and he was like the advertisement guy for it. And his wife was the one insisting she must work for Vault Tech or something that that he do this. And so there's going to be history there. So uh, another great episode in episode three. What did you think, Joe? This one uh, a little less, not much going on. Basically, uh, some storytelling, but still good. I would say an eight for me on this one. Uh, I'm going to go with a seven. I don't find anything that's going on in the vault. Um, I think four episode four is when it starts to pick up. It's like I, I don't necessarily care what they think about the prisoners. I know it's going to come mean something important yeah. later on. Who's running for uh, you know leader? It doesn't matter. Once they get to the the, the creepiness of the other vaults is where I get interested. I'm just not interested here. This is actually what I mentioned in the, the overall review. It's like I, I feel like we're spinning our wheels, and there is good stuff. It just it, I think they needed to speed up the the point. So you, so, start, yeah. you said it start it started to sag a little bit when what. Uh, did did this the Brotherhood episode? find the gulper? Maybe? Um, I don't like any of the vault stuff in this oh, one. Oh, so in the vault, when we go back to the brother character. Yeah, I don't think okay. that uh, episode four is when I like the vault stuff because we start getting to some of the interesting parts. Mm-hmm. But like, you so, know, um, I like it a little better. I'm I'm on Joe's level, eight out of ten. I thought it was solid enough and uh, interesting, good, good action, good. Uh, you know, bringing the characters together. I'm glad we're not doing this thing where it's like, uh oh, will they? Won't they? They're gonna meet up or constantly doing something over here constantly doing something over here no they come together relatively quickly even though it feels a little convenient in this world's way smaller than it actually is so that needs to be addressed moving on to episode four the ghouls this is referring to the opening scene basically where ghoul visits ghoul uh, uh goggins character Ain't got no drugs, goes to his buddy who could potentially have drugs, but he is turning, and we see the effects. And he's like, hey, he's do you have out. any? And he's like, I don't have any, and, you know, I'm all out, and he's just holding. So, basically, uh, he has his friend think of uh, the good times. He's like, hey, you remember food? He's like, yeah, yeah, man, that was around. My mom made this great apple <laughs> She's like, fuck, gives him a good memory and shoots his brains out and fucking kills him. And then, uh, I guess because he had been uh, chomping on drugs before, he rips, uh, he just starts cutting his friends open. Makes some jerky. Yeah. Back what? Makes some jerky. Makes some back jerky, butt jerky. Calls it butt jerky, ass jerky. Ass jerky. Ass (laughs) jerky. No, but I guess he's, well, I guess he's hungry, but he, I was thinking it had something to do with there's drugs still in the system. I don't fucking know, but he's a ghoul. Do you think they abandoned the head real quick? Like, real quick? Yes, I do. That's what I was going to say, because, like, he, um, Cooper's like, this is, like, a huge score. People want a ton of money. He's like, all right, well, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, they they left immediately because bro. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Because well, I was thinking also it might have been because he's out of drugs. he's out of drugs. Like so, he needs the drugs, but so I mean, like they... I, I do think eventually, and and people can jump in in defense. You know, yeah. in hindsight, it's easier to defend something. Oh well, once he gets the drugs, they're going back to the gulper because the gulper's going to be there. The gulper's not going anywhere. But it's yeah, like the head yeah, is going to digest. Yeah, we we need to get that head. It needs to be Maybe priority. Maybe that's what he's thinking. He's, like, he's going to poop we'll, it out. We'll, we'll allow tr- it because it's like yeah. he's going to do this and then he'll come right back. 
So anyways, I'll go, um, go ahead. Yeah, so it's a really good, it's kind of a cool scene that we see, you know, the how the ghouls operate and how they, like, slowly can turn feral and why there's this constant need to, to do that. And so... Um, then when they leave, she has to um, help drink radiated oh, water. Yeah, she's been, she's walked up to water sources over and over and over and she's constantly, like, seeing it, you know, the, the Geiger counter. And it's just not, it's yeah, not... He actually pours water out in front of her like a dick. Yeah. You can tell that he, he has some, a little bit of prejudice against her. I think it's because she's a vault dweller. She's a vault dweller. And then, in fact, there, he sees a poster of the vault fallout boy and he's like, bah! And just shoots it. Well, that's him. And we're like, what the fuck? What's mm -hmm. going on? It's like, oh shit, he's got ties to it. What? Well, I mean, he's the, the origin of the Fallout it's, it's, Boy, it's, you think? Yeah. yeah it's let, me, let me do a thumbs up. I was like, hey. Hey, look, I was like, nobody, nobody should be Vault Boy, or there should be no. I mean, it's not explicitly said, but if there's gonna be one character that could be the Vault Boy, I'm allowed with Gawkins. Anyway, Cooper, do it. He's coughing. She runs because he's definitely feeling the effects. Um. And then he lassos her. He lassos her and she fucking takes his finger. And he's like, oh, yeah, bitch, you take my finger. You fucking cut your finger off. I'm like, holy shit, this series is wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, bitch. He's like, this is the first uh, actual. She bites his finger off. Yeah. So he's like, well, here's your fucking boo. And then now we commun communicate now, bitch. That shit was fucking crazy. It was gruesome. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, I I like this. This is this spirit. This series is a little mean spirited at times, um, and then a little stupid at times. With the you know, it's like God damn, you know, they have everything good, and then there's like one little writing bit that they could sure up to get it to the ten out of tens and nine out of tens that it's definitely capable of. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we go back to the vault. We get the pregnant lady and the Bert scene, and this scene, this this little little extraneous here. We didn't need to do this. She just. She's hot and horny, you know, pregnant women, I guess, the <laughs> hormones, and then she's feeling for her uh, husband, so she has the guy Bert, where right. gets Bert. a little hot and happy, and he's like, whoa, damn, woman, you wet, and uh, she she was definitely wet. Water broke. Mm -hmm. I'm like, again, this series goes hard, and then her she gets massively wet. Uh, and then the ghoul, and then we go back to the ghoul, so I, that's all. That By the way, that's all. Okay, cool. So... Trying to do an HBO thing, I guess. Uh, Ghoul sells her to a supermarket robot. And we have a cameo from Fucking Mr. love this guy. Matt Mr. Barry. Handy, Matt Barry. Uh, same voice, I think. He's the best. Um, and this robot's so polite. And yeah, I mean, fixes her finger right up. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't work like that, but it's fallout and whatever. He uses stems and he lasers and everything. And it, she's like, oh, thank you so much. Everybody's so mean. And it's like, it's like. Yeah, no problem. Of course. Yeah. He's like, I thought you was going to sell me for sex. He's like, that's disgusting. I would never do that. I'm, you know, I'm just going to harvest your organs. <laughs> and yeah. So we get that little thing. We cut away back to the vault. I need more time with each individual scene. You know, maybe give them sections. Boom, boom, boom. But they're kind of intercut. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get that two minute little horny pregnant lady scene that doesn't feel like. Anyway. Mm. So he's giving jello to prisoners here. And Vault 32, um, them fake Vault 32, you know, he interacts with the prisoner and the they're writers, like, yeah. he's like, you killed the innocent people in the vault. He's like, oh, yeah. Uh, they're anything but innocent. We've been there before. You, you ain't been there. We've been there, and, and they're anything but innocent. He gets them curious. So this lets him uh, venture into Vault 32. I like this stuff. This is interesting. Yeah, this no, is, that one's good. This is juicy. Taking the rocks out of the way. It's dark. It's what the fuck is. And you see dead bodies. You see dead bodies like they were killing themselves and mm -hmm. and they went mad and there's blood all over the wall we know the truth or you know all this kind of yeah and he checks his uh, the, the, their pit boys like they haven't had vitals for like two, two years, years. Yeah, so it's like so wait a minute the raiders. raiders didn't kill everybody yeah. i mean but how did they get in they had to kill some somebody well we Death learned we management. learned that and uh in fact you know people are watching videos there's like a little reference on tv lab rats are walking around and it's a vault tech thing there's a logo in there and i'm like man I don't know. Vault Tech has some some weird shit. There might be something going on there. We know from the video games, but anyway, um, yeah. They, uh, well, 
not to jump in or whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you, no, please jump in. Yeah, whenever, uh, but. Norman's checking out the computer, and then he's like, the door was open on the outside. It's like, well, you can't do that without a pit boy. He's like, right. they did have a pit boy. It belonged to my mom. And then oh, that's, oh yes, like, Holy yes, shit. that's like, that's the big uh, reveal there. Um, so apparently, the mom character is going to be a thing in this series. That's what I was thinking too. I was like, okay, she, right. so how did these raiders get in? The mom. The mom literally betrayed everybody. And or they her stole pit her pit boy. Pit boy was point. at the stores as well. So mystery. I think, I think the mom's I responsible in some way. Stole it out she <laughs> idolizes her mom, and her, we know her dad's a good guy, but he has a weird past too. So it's going to turn yeah, out to be that, one of these are evil, maybe both, maybe one. The mom. Yeah, because the raider, the leader raider, she's like, "Oh yeah, you look just like your mom." I was like, "Okay, this is second time." You've mentioned her. Mm-hmm. So. so she's definitely from the outside. Yeah. Uh, go back to Mr. Handy. His, 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 well, this one's called Snip Snip, Mr. Snip Snip. And um, yeah, that one char- that one character actor that plays the same guy and everything. Yes. Like, yeah, whatever. You know, he's like the friendly like, henchman. Hey guys, the, the mouth breather henchman. Yeah. It's like, how does this guy have a job in a criminal organization? But whatever, and he, and uh, she fights back. Yeah, like yeah, take her in the back. They they want her now, or they want the parts now, or whatever. So she he's gonna harvest her parts now. She uses a brack so and fights back, gets him to cut her restraints, and then uses the axe against him and uh, wins. And then she forces those two idiots, mouth breathers, to release all of the ghouls and the sense, you know, sentient ones. Or the ones that still have humanity are like, thank you, thank you. And maybe they'll remember. And she starts a ghoul. She has friends amongst the ghouls now. But the problem is she sees one of the ghouls who we saw before. My name is Martha. My name is Martha. Why would you say like, that? The prisoner Pretty next really. to her. Like, Shut the <laughs> fuck up. You say that. Like, you've been saying that for the past 17 hours. Yeah, I'd be so mad. She's like, let let them out too. It's and like, they're you like, don't lady, want those. you want that? She didn't see off camera. There's other cages presses the button when she's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And then... Because she wouldn't, like, she just saw Cooper's friend. Right. Turning. I wrote that down. I'm like... I was like, you know... A little the stupid. guy's like, hey... You're doing a little TV You don't things. want those out. Right. I was like, okay, I get it you, for dramatic effect. Every now but... and then, it it does the stupid forced drama that, that, that we don't like here. You yeah. know, you can get these things across... Write it in a different way where she's not like actively being stupid. Yeah, one button opens all the cages. He's like, lady, if I open up that. one cage, you yeah. open all the cages. And she's like, I said that. open them. And then, you know, there, it's an easy way to do it without, yeah. Mm-hmm. Something as simple as that. And uh, so she, uh, the feral ones get out. Uh, the two incompetent idiots actually take out quite a few of them, try to hold them off, yeah. but they eventually die. Mm-hmm. And uh, she manages to tough it Finally out. Finally kill one. And she fight. kills Martha. Yeah. She kills Martha. <laughs> First kill. And it's it's it, she's going back and forth. She's like, please stop. You know, she wants to appeal to her good side. And then she realizes you can't do this up here. And she does it. So yep. that's her transformation. When she goes into the supermarket, she is the vault dweller. When she, she comes, comes out, out, she is the wanderer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She got the wanderer armor and stuff. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. And uh, But with the heart of gold. Because she exactly. goes up to Cooper. He's like, look, yeah. The war, it's probably going to change me, but I still won't be like you. And I might look him, like you, but, but I'll I never be like you. you. Yeah. yeah. And gives him the, the drugs. The needs. drugs. Right. And that does him a fucking solid. So if this, and the ghoul has morals. So I think the ghoul is going to be like her friend now because she, she did him that solid. Plus he remember. Oh, well that's later on. Yeah. So then, uh, I may, I may end up looking like you, but I'll never be you golden rule motherfucker. Now she's more of a badass with leather armor transformed, uh, wanders. And then she gives him the drugs and then, oh, he goes in and he finds so much drugs. Like this is his cash. Uh, this is my video game. Brain. You get like, an F. Lucy, what the fuck are you doing? Look at all this shit. Take it. She leaves. Take their fucking guns. <laughs> Take everything they have. Take the bottle caps. Yeah, but it's caps. not a video game, Joe. She doesn't have the Death Stranding pack where she can carry Take everything. Take the bottle I caps. Know. I know no, they I have totally bottle agree. caps. I totally that. agree. Well, I thought you were talking about the, the stupid-ass scene that's even dumber when Cooper goes yes, in there. that one too. And all of the drugs he needs are in a nice, wooden, secure box he can carry. And he just dumps them out into his fucking hat instead. You can't put the hat back on. What are you going to do? And it's just like, <laughs> come on. Well, there's just some good writing here. And then when you see scenes like this, you're like... 
the same writers couldn't have written that. What's what? What? And it's I it, and it's like this is for dumb audiences. But you have moments in the show where it's written for smart audiences. So shoot, stop it. Just stop it. Quick anyway. fix. Yeah, he has his satchel. Or is it just dump it in there? He's got his satchel. He's gone. Boom. Bam. Anyways, Damn. he finds a tape. He sees a TV. He puts the tape in. It happens to be one of his movies. And yeah. again, convenience, but we'll allow for this. This sense, this is fine. And he watches himself say the line and kill the bad guy. And this they made him refilm it. And home. he actually yeah. does shoot the guy in the head. He's like, you commie son of a bitch. And he realizes, oh, this, you know, this is like propaganda back in the day. And I turned into a killer. So I think this is all going into his head. And we're, we're going to turn him from... I'm hardened from the wasteland. I'm a fucking killer into his encounter with the vault dweller and such idealistic yeah. and, and doing the right thing is going to change him and make him realize I've turned into a monster, but I don't have to be. I don't have to be that person. And he, he, she showed him one last act of kindness and went off. Maybe in the next episode, he'll show up and save her at the last minute or something and they'll be buddies. I, at least I hope. Want it to be a buddy cop thing. Need to have Goggins. That's There's an thinking. episode without Goggins. It's going to hurt. Uh, so we need That's that. what I'm thinking for the next couple episodes. Maybe we get a little flashback. He'll start thinking about his daughter and everything. Then kind of like have that influence. Yes. Her, yes. Her, we her, still don't know Lucy. what happens to the daughter. Yeah. We're going to assume that she uh, either is incinerated by the bomb. Though in that scene, we forgot to talk about this. One of the rich guys does have an underground shelter. So there might be some Doosh. chance he's still alive that he got convinced the daughter to get in the shelter somewhere. No, they both rode on the horse. Well, it didn't matter anyway because she'd be dead because yes. this is 200 some years later. I don't know what the yeah. hell I was thinking. That's yeah, right. so, that too. <laughs> anyways, uh, very good so far. Uh, we wanted to give you individual breakdowns because honestly, I both love that I can watch everything right now and I kind of hate it. Because it ruins that anticipation of the next week. We can do the individual episodes. There's that, you know, build up and it's cool. But um, so I like I like it and I hate it. I hate yeah. waiting, but then I like them having them all. And then it kills us to try to do this all in one sword. day. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, and, all right. Anyways, double edged sword. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we will see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.